Hey, welcome back to another episode of Stage Door, a theater podcast hosted by a couple of regular guys. We are continuing our series, which I'm just so happy that we have so many great people that have come from this area that we can just keep bringing more people on. Our series of starring role. And today's guest is Cassie Okanka. If you don't know who she is, then come on, man. You got to figure these things out. She is amazing. She's done lots of great things. And also, we have a special guest host today. The guys bailed on me. So How dare them. <laughs> so I know. So normally it's two guys and, and the guest, but today you, you're lucky you get Holly. Yeah. Yeah, my wonderful wife who's just, she's way more cool than me and Best way more person, fun. Best person, a better person. I know. <laughs> She, yeah, Sorry, she, we 80s, were, 90s movie reference. Yeah, so she's way more fun. She's funnier. She's clever. She's all that stuff. You may recognize her her work. She's a she's a nationally recognized photographer. So she's pretty good. Some of her like stuff she did. She uh, she had this gallery that was uh, I went to Iceland without my husband. There was that one. That was, that was a great. That mm-hmm. was the best. Trip that was a great ever. gallery. Yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't see that one, there was uh, "Honey, I'm Going to New York City Without You" while you take care of the broken dog. There was, was that, that gallery. Was that, was that before or after the "Honey, I'm Going to Puerto Rico Without You"? Yeah. It's a great series. I, I know, know, right? It's a lot of. Uh, she's pretty good. How about, trend. how about when your daughter turns 21? She wants to go with me to Disney yeah. to celebrate her 21st birthday. And guess who will be Just watching the dogs? Us. <laughs> You're like, I'll hold down the fort. She, she, the already dogs, wants, she already wants to order drinking Disney-themed shirts. Oh, my oh, God. Are you going to drink around the world? Uh, that would be a great idea. Yes. <laughs> Go to Epcot, drink around no, the world. Like, and then this is the thing. It's ass camp. I am really not a big drinker, but I'm like, if my 21-year-old her, thinks I'm yeah. cool enough, I'm going to be like, Take it. Yeah. Run with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so I haven't seen you in forever, so I, I am spoiled. I did get to see you a long time ago. You... Your mother works at WTOL or did work mm-hmm. at WTOL for years, and you had come in. I don't even know why you came in. Do you remember why? The, I've, the studio was never a – it was basically like a second I home. I felt like you were just wandering. It, that so, sounds about right. Yeah, and I saw you in the break room, and you were just like, I'm here, you know, and I'm like – and your mom introduced me to you, and uh, I felt like, oh, she likes musical theater. My kid likes musical theater. And then I heard you, uh, like, how much you like musical theater and that you were a huge deal, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm wow, okay. <laughs> I just told her that my seven-year-old is doing theater. <laughs> oh, but what we want to start off with, like, who you are, what makes you a huge deal? Like, what oh, do gosh. you think is the best thing that you did? It depends on who you ask. Okay. If you ask uh, Joe Schmo down the street, mm-hmm. I got to sing Back Up for Stevie Nicks. Oh. So, like... That's cool. If you, I mean, I that think is it's cool. cool, right? Exactly. Like it's it's. If you know nothing about theater, you're like, ooh, that's cool. If you are in musical theater, I was part of two original Broadway companies, Bonnie and Clyde and School of Rock, and I got to make my Broadway debut physically on stage as Bonnie in Bonnie and Clyde. Wow. If you are an actor, I have been able to sustain a decade's worth of living just on acting jobs. Amazing. So okay, like, that's, and so that's, I'm, I'm that's sitting amazing over here. amazing as it is. I'm ah, really lucky. I'm sitting over here acting like I don't stalk her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please tell me what you're doing. Uh-huh. I'm just sitting over here thinking I was cool because I once saw Ricky Lake at Disney World. <laughs> I was like, cool. go Ricky, go Ricky. And you're like, oh, I just said And you thought you weren't going to, yeah, you thought it wasn't going to be a big deal. And then you saw her and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm kind of fangirl. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's really but sweet. I do, I, once in a while I hit a little like on your thing. I don't want to be a total oh. creep and not you know hit everything you post but i, I stock you i see what's going on that's sweet thank you <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back so we want to go all the way back to when you were just a babes yeah. and, and let's decide like how in the world did you even start doing this what was the emphasis what was the whatever it is that pushed you to this you can blame uh the toledo institution zor family so uh, uh, tom zor was okay. my music teacher okay um he actually the world is very small he lived down the street from my mom growing up so mm-hmm. the zor family and my mom the levinson family very close and so um mr zor tom zor was my music teacher in third grade and he was like, hey, there's this theater, Grandma Rose's Diner Entertainment Theater on Perrysburg is the D.C. Ranch. Okay. Is putting on Annie Warbucks. Not Annie, but Annie Warbucks. And I don't know the difference between that at all. What is it's that? It's the sequel. It ran off oh, Broadway. The okay. sequel to Annie. Like, you know. Like Never the, like the sc- heard of that before. No, it's like <laughs> right? the scary Wizard of Oz, too, that they did exactly. that nobody wants to ever watch. Okay. And so I auditioned, and I know there was at least 60 girls, because I was mm. number 60. 
and I got <laughs> called back and I got number six. So that was 66 is my lucky number. Mm. And uh, I ended up getting the role of Molly. And what's that's the, a great part. It's a it great is. It Molly, really Molly's is. Molly's a spunky one, yeah. It yeah, really it's is. Really fun. And what was so interesting, I didn't realize it until a couple years ago, is it had a long run. Oh. And for a first show where typically you'd have a weekend, maybe two, this ran for like a couple months. At this diner thing? At, that the, you were? at Grandma Rosa's Diner Gra- Entertainment oh, Theater. Okay. Hey, you know what, man? The ladies, the little old ladies, <laughs> mm-hmm. love them some Annie. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> and it was around Christmas time, so you get like all that fun stuff. Do you want to hear an even smaller world moment? Of course. So the Annie that was cast uh, was double cast, so they alternated. Mm-hmm. And one of them was Sarah Shepard. Oh. Sarah Shepard is a rep kid yeah, here Sarah. in Toledo. <laughs> but what, so we, we worked together. In, yeah, yeah. In third grade, we worked together. She was a rep kid. I did uh, children's theater workshops, so we didn't really see each other. Uh-huh. I had not physically seen her until she was playing softball on the Broadway Softball League at on the beautiful team my husband was playing on. So literally decades later, I went down there and I was like, oh, hey, Sarah. Like, how are you? That she is was part nuts. of my first theater oh my experience. Gosh. So you hadn't seen Sarah since you were how old? Third grade, eight, Third, nine. So eight, and then you saw her on Broadway. Basically. Man, this this is kind I of crazy. Think, job. Yep. <laughs> I honestly feel like, because I feel like everybody in local theater that ever goes off and does anything all started at you know some kind of show where they each met each other like everybody knows each other like it's very the small rep, world. ctw like that's how we know we knew about you is when our son was first starting at ctw oh, oh. and they were that- like oh she's a ctw <laughs> alum and, and gabe was like "Ooh, ah yeah. <laughs> of course all six or six years old of him you yeah. know but even back then that's what he's always wanted to do so to that. hear to hear like these people that are in this area that are actually doing it like you know Libby you know Libby yes. a good friend with Libby Survey and she yes, was just in and she's from Maumee it's like this doesn't make sense how is this happening that all these people are from Northwest Ohio area and going on and it's doing like these a, amazing it's a things. secret club here this is a great area for theater it really it and really I know is. Jay Ellis who is down I think he's. Finley area. I know Lucy Anders is Finley area. Oh, give me those names. Uh, Send me that info. Right, we'll she's a, big, I, a lot of BW Baldwin Wallace people. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, but Jay Ellis right now is on the tour of Freestyle Love Supreme, so he like regularly works with Lin Manuel Miranda, just like you know, just like just, just working on a team, just very cash. It's like, oh know. my gosh. Does he call him just Lin? Hey, Lin, what's up? You know, he's like, hey, Lin. He's like, you missed your line. You missed your cue. Oh. You're in your wrong spot. <laughs> All right, so you you did this thing when you were tiny, and you mm-hmm. were just this little little dink, and you did a you were Molly. Then you know that was it. Did somebody come up to you and say, "Oh, you're it, you're it, baby, you're gonna be amazing someday"? Oh God, no. <laughs> um, it was basically like my parents were super supportive, and I was like, "As long as you are having fun doing yeah. it, let's keep going." And so I took dance at Hanf Dance Studio on Sylvania Avenue. I took classes at CTW. I was part of the Toledo Opera Youth Chorale. Oh, what was the name of the dance studio? I'm sorry. Hamp Dance Studio Hamp? on Sylvania Avenue. Is that still around? Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, I feel bad not knowing that. Tina okay. was my tap teacher. Okay. She's the jam. Shout out to Tina. Shout out to um, Tina. We'll, we'll tag we'll yeah, tag Hamp hey. in this post. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You no. It's good though. It's there's so many dance studios here as well. Yeah, there really is. is. Like we just saw, we were getting ice cream the other day. I'm not even kidding. Oh, we're in there this getting ice adorable. cream, and this adorable little girl, her dad, who's like over six foot tall, walks in, and this teeny tiny little thing. May have been. 18 two inches tall. Half, three, oh my gosh, so little. Three, two and a half, three years old. And she's got like this little like ballerina kind of yeah. practice warm up. And then I looked down and I saw her little tiny ballet shoes. And oh. I'm like, this girl's a ballerina. And I had, I'm like, yeah. she, it was just so cute, but she was company C. And it's just like, yeah. oh, we're nice. the weirdos who will say something. Oh yeah. We're we like, will. oh my as, God, she's adorable. We have to say something. As you should. <laughs> she's really cute. Because the dad looked like a skyscraper next to her. Of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, just know, wait, wait for your legs to come in. <laughs> but this, but this area is just a, a very supportive mm-hmm. of theater, vocal teachers, dance. I mean, there's just so much in the arts in this area. It's crazy. Okay, it's really so you true. did. You saw. I'm sorry. You you, you danced at, mm-hmm. at Hamp, and then you you did CTW. Mm-hmm. You said, and then what was the other thing you did? Um, I did the T- Toledo Opera Youth Chorale. Oh, well, I don't know what that is. It what used is to run. I don't know when it stopped. I think Sarah Shepard mentioned this, or maybe Libby mentioned this. It sounds familiar. One of those. I don't think. Sarah was involved. Mm. It was run by um, a wonderful woman, Amy and Lori Garvin. Mm -hmm. And what was cool about it is we got to do like 
oh, you do the camps and you do the recital and blah, blah, blah. But when a road show would come through and needed kids, they would pull from the Toledo Opera Youth Chorale. So I was part of the children's chorus when the National Tour of Joseph came oh, through. Nice. I was Sweet. part of the um, Oliver kids when what? Oliver came through. And so I got to work with Andrew McArdle, which I was like, <gasps> Andrew McArdle, as like a child doing Annie. This is my dream come true. You know who Andrew McArdle is, Annie? Not a cool yeah, Original neither, Annie, no. just. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And so she was playing Nancy, and it was very... And so I got to have some really cool experiences. I was put in the right place in the right time very often. Okay, that's cool, though. But, okay, so then again, you're just playing around, though, right? I mean, yeah. when, when did you start doing a little more... You Sixth said, you kept grade. Going. Sixth grade already, okay. And I remember I was part of the t- uh, Talented and Gifted program in Toledo Public Schools oh. and Horizons. Oh, yeah. And we had a, a mentor project, and they were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll be a teacher. I didn't really know that being an actor yeah. was an option. My mom working at the TV station, I was like, mm-hmm. maybe I'll be an anchor. But I was like, I can't really write, and I'm not a <laughs> journalist. So like, maybe not that one. And so I remember following a teacher around and her being like, this is how you do lesson plans. This is how you do blah, blah, blah. Oh, shoot And I was like, this sounds terrible. I just want to like sing and dance for the rest of my life. I was a teacher for 14 years. It's so hard. It really is. Oh, my gosh. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sing and dance and see how long this, see how far this takes me. And from then on, uh, there is the Performing Arts School. I went to the one out on Reynolds Road, Performing Arts School of Metropolitan Toledo. That is now defunct. Okay, I've never heard that one. What was it called? P- uh, Performing Arts School of Metropolitan Toledo, PASMT. Okay. It uh-huh. opened at the same time as TSA did. Oh, we, so, I guess we see who won. Victory. Yes. <laughs> Victory. They handled their money much better than we did. Um, but like incredible teachers there. We had um, uh, Luis Dominguez and Elena Bartley that came from Dance Theater of Harlem and mm. ballet hispanico nice. and so like i'm again right place right time i'm learning these incredible things and is making, this junior high this is high school high school okay this is the high school you went to yeah so you went to a high school that no longer exists correct okay just making sure okay yeah it's, re- it's really fun when you think about it you're oh, like, yeah yeah oh. my high school almost doesn't exist right now so i'm, I'm feeling any minute now it won't exist so. it, you're like cool my it's entire past is in a school. box it's a little farm school Aww. it's getting smaller and smaller every year i'm like graduating <laughs> class of 12 i'm like Ooh, any minute now that's been they're like let's just shuttle you all over yeah go to different um, things so and so all when i started in high school i started doing summer programs at Croswell Opera House up in Adrian, Michigan. And that was my first experience working with an equity actor, somebody that's part of the union. And so working with Nolan Hines and Michael Lackey and uh, Stephanie Steffen, Stephanie Dennehy now, I got to know, oh, this is what it's this is what professional theater is. I didn't know you worked with Stephanie. That's I awesome. did. Stephanie was our very first guest You're on this kidding. podcast. No, no, no. We've had her on a couple times, but she was our first because I love her. I her love personality's that. through the roof. And I said, if we're going to do this podcast, I need to make sure somebody who's got a personality is on first. That's so. perfect. That hey, is perfect. Then look it up in the dictionary. Her smiling face is going to uh, be in there under personality. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love she does. that. She's great. It's true. And so I started to be like, okay. This is, I can keep up. I can keep up. I can, my work ethic is there. I feel like I can do this. And the director of Evita, um, Herb Wiley, he's the father of Sean Wiley, who was in Jersey Boys. He does Under the Street Lamp now. And he was like, have you thought about auditioning at Carnegie Mellon? I think you could get in. Whoa. And I was like, oh, I I can do this. Okay, <laughs> so like. Let's see what happens. Some guy just threw out Carnegie Mellon like it was no big deal to get into. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 a big, how, that's a big deal, my game. That, how, do you right? get, how do you get to Carnegie Mellon? Practice, practice? What was that? I don't know that joke. It was something like that. Yeah. Someone, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Yeah, Bribe practice. someone. <laughs> <laughs> and like this was back pre, pre-screens, pre college oh, yeah. auditions. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it was kind of like, do I want to go that far away to school was my choice rather than like, I need to throw out 20, like, applications and hope for the best and so from there i auditioned at uh ccm u of m outerbine baldwin wallace and ended up getting into baldwin wallace wow you went for all the really i went in ones i went in i was like there is and i had the backup of like and my parents were cool like if this doesn't work out you're gonna go somewhere for a year get some gen eds and then we'll we'll start this again now this was 1999, 2000 time? When was 2004. It? 2004. This mm-hmm. was when you went to, to college. 
2004? Yes. Okay. So back then, did you know that those schools were like crazy to get into? Or um, was CCM it? and U of M, yeah. Those okay. were my reach schools. Okay. Um, Otterbein was like, I feel like this could be okay. I, I met some kids that have gone there, and I was like, I feel like I'm on par. Baldwin Wallace, same type of thing. It was also nice that it was away from home, but I didn't have to get on on an airplane to get back mm-hmm, home. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of a consideration, too. Uh, BW was had a pretty good reputation, but it was people re- weren't really using the internet like that because I'm old. No, and no, that's what I wanted to know because it's it's yeah. like Otterbein, for example, is like this hidden gem that's in Ohio. Yeah, and if you're not from Ohio, you don't know this at all. You yeah, don't you know that it's a drop great school. Otterbein to somebody that's like not necessarily yeah. in theater, and they'd be like, what? "Oh, you know, the school in Ohio." Yeah. But then other than that, they'd be like, oh, "Is that?" And good? in 2004. <laughs> People in theater wouldn't have known that in Texas. Yeah, you know, exactly. Hardcore Texas theater people would be like, Otter who? Exactly. You know, but now... People know. Now they know. Yeah. Now you exactly. have a list of like all the top mediums. So weird. I was just wondering if you knew. Because again, you were only 17, 18. What mm-hmm. do you know, right? I like... I was like this. I, I knew nothing. I'm trying. I'm pretty much <laughs> deflecting how much I knew onto you, which was nothing. I'm probably not giving you I, enough credit. I was like nerd. Oh. So like <laughs> I was going on Playbill.com every day. Oh. I was going on like Googling people, nice. getting the cast recordings from the library, oh, trying wow. to connect this, that, and the other. The library. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who uses the library anymore? Not now it's all on Spotify. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Kidding. So like I was, I was very much that. Obsessive musical theater kid. That's good though. Yeah, I mean it that's paid what off. you wanted. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously, you could have done all of that and been just not be able to sing. Right. Too, so. <laughs> but that's what, again. I'm going back to Ohio and this Northwest Ohio. It's like it's one thing that we have all this, you know, nurturing. But how are there so many people that can actually sing around here that go? I mean, we're talking Broadway. We're, we're not lucky. talking. You know, just any old thing. That's like an elite, elite. How many people get on Broadway? Like less than one percent. It's like it's well, crazy. Even national tours. Too. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah. Those, I count that as Broadway. That, I mean, that's not nothing. I kind of count that as Broadway. I count too. that I'm as like, Broadway. Dude, that counts as Broadway in my book. Because uh, yeah, could I do that? Pfft, no. It's no, really it's, amazing. You're I, putting on Broadway shows, just not on in New York City. There's no difference to me. And I think the Ohio still is really kind of holding on to the arts. I know for mm. a hot moment there was starting to be some funding issues, and I'm there's it, there's always funding issues. Oh. In, education but i do feel like uh, from around the country of what i'm hearing from people's hometowns toledo does seem to hold on to a little bit more to arts education than the norm thank god Good. right no seriously because Ugh. it is like that is something i obviously do something that's art related absolutely kyle does yeah emma <laughs> emma loved loved doing theater loved being an artist yeah. emma's our daughter the- by the way that's what i assumed <laughs> but it's like but we like i can't even imagine if they took something like that away because now you've thrown tons of people that love that into a okay now it's what? just mm-hmm. a very good rounding experience in life in general so like our daughter who does nothing in theater now has gained a lot from doing theater for a decade. Absolutely. You know, she started when she's eight, and she did it until she was out of high school, and she she's a better person for and it. And she has probably incredible skills. She's ridiculous. Like, you yeah. can work, <laughs> you could be, be amazed of how many people cannot work in a group. Oh, well, yeah. Like, can, it's insane. Oh, she's an amazing leader, too. Yes. Like, that girl is ridiculously, like, This is not about Emma, though. This podcast is about... She Cassie. better toot her daughter's <laughs> horn. Toot, toot. Hey, yes. hey, you want me on the podcast? Oh, sorry. My kids come up. Uh, I sorry. relate Proud experiences. Proud mama. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying. So then you, you go and you audition to all those places, mm-hmm. okay, and they all said yes to you? Um, no. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> U of M was like, no, thank you. She's uh, I remember my we went down to audition and that was my first like big audition mm. and I remember when we were driving home my dad was like I have never seen so many girls that look like you oh geez. and I was like oh no you're like don't say that exactly. that's not so, true you're a redhead I was <laughs> um yeah that one did not get in uh Otterbein I got waitlisted BW I got waitlisted at and so I was kind of like okay BW was my top choice uh-huh. uh and so I was like okay let me um, know that I know at that moment you could go there and major in theater and re-audition. So mm. if I knew I was waitlisted, we can see what happened. I ended up getting in at Otterbein. I called BW and I was like, hey, I got accepted at another school. I'm really interested in BW. Can I get off the waitlist? Oh, my gosh. And like a couple days went by. 
Uh, I got the phone call that I got in. And so then I went to my job at Toys R Us singing like, everything's coming up frozen. <laughs> like, because everything's musical theater in my head. Of course. And I was able to go, which was really, really I can't really believe cool. you did that, though. You were just like, you were just honest with them. Yeah. You were just like, hey. This is all I, I, I want to come to your school, so could you just, you know, give me a spot Help me out so here. I don't have to go somewhere else? Hey, you yeah. showed initiative. Yeah. Yes. So I don't have to go to this other really great school. I'm going to go to your <laughs> great school. <laughs> so like, and be like, this other great school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, but I really want to go to Baldwalla. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you graduated from. You went to Baldwalla, and they taught you everything, and you were, and you were great. And, and they, they kicked me out of the nest and said, good luck. Yeah, Class of uh, 2008? Yes. Okay. okay, 2008. And then so when you were there... Obviously, is there anybody you want to give a shout out to that was just amazing that, you know, thank thank um, God they were there because they made you who you are? Um, I mean, <laughs> the head of the program, Victoria Bussard, she's still uh, helping. Who Libby tackled in the... Yes! Yeah. <laughs> she is lovely and uh, I think she's smart and academia is really hard. It's hard to navigate mm. as an, uh, somebody on both sides. And I think she does a really nice job doing the best she can and doing what she can in the environment she has. And people are beginning to trust her more and more at the college, which I think is obviously paying off seeing of who is graduating now comparatively right. as years are growing up. Um, my voice teacher, Doc Massard, he's mm-hmm. out in California now. He really helped. I only belted. I belted for like, I would mar- barely sing in my head voice. I just screamed everything. Uh-huh. And so he really helped me explore my entire instrument, which was really helpful. Um, Janice Kelly Kiteley, rest in peace. She was a gem. Um, and really the Cleveland is another big arts place. And so yeah, having Playhouse great, oh, there, oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. The Playhouse, Great Lakes Theater Festival, the Beck Center, Kane Park, all these places that are really hungry and So you just able. named everything else. The only thing I knew is Cleveland Playhouse. <laughs> so you named all those places. I'm like, I didn't even know they had all those other things. Oh, it's things. insane. I think uh, Doug, there's another one. The Bounty Hunter? Oh. Basically, <laughs> the Bounty Hunter's there. When you say oh dog, my it's gosh, like... you're throwing out the dad <laughs> well, jokes you said in dog, the middle of the podcast. <laughs> you did not trend. You did do. not just bring up something that was 15 years old. Oh, well, you know. Just... There is a show now called um, uh, Broadway Bounty Hunter. Uh-huh. It's uh, starring Annie Golden uh-huh. and written by Joe Iconis. And it's a really delightful 70s jam. 70s jam? Mm-hmm. Okay. See, the, so when I say dog, I could transition right into Bruno. Is that his name, Bruno? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We don't see? talk about him, though. <laughs> but see, this is, so when I first, yeah. So I'm, at, I'm at work, and, you know, Helen, who is Cassie's mom, says, oh, my daughter is, is in musical theater, all nonchalantly, like it's no, nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, is she really? Oh, yeah, she's, she was on this MTV oh, thing. Gosh. And I'm like, what? Like what are you what are you talking about? Mom. She's on MTV. Hey, we and so watched. she was in my office actually, and she like she's like yeah, she's on uh, legally search for the next L Woods. I remember Kyle like was so like fangirly coming oh, yeah, home terrible. and telling me this, and then he like then when you sang for. Dorothy. Well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I was going to say. I got to I wanna... watch that video, too, because he's like, watch this, watch this. <laughs> yeah. So when when I hit play on the Legally Blonde on the interweb, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, let me see how she is. I hit the play, and I was like, uh, this girl. <laughs> holy crap. I can she do can sing. Oh. I, well, you were just this little tiny thing. Yeah. And then you opened your mouth, and you said, well, you belt. Yeah, you did. I That's was like, holy do, yeah. shiz. Uh, yeah, so that was a huge deal. And then when you came back to the station, you were talking about, I don't want to keep going on here and whatever. But, so like in high school, somebody must have told you you were okay, though, to do this, right? Um, I mean, nobody told me not to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would trust them to be like, do you want to look into another path? Uh-huh. But everybody was, uh, my high school was great because it taught, they did not treat I, like, I knew I had talent, but I did not get all the starring roles. I did not get cast in everything. and so Which is which is really good. It, at yeah. the time, of course, it's like, the no. world has crumbled. My no. life is Why over. Are they I'm never going to do it right? again. Why, don't they see how great I am? How dare they? I was like, I, like, can't, like we were doing freshman year. We did uh, Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. Mm-hmm. And this is right with, after the revival happened. And mm. Kristen Chenoweth won the Tony. Yeah, you wanted and, to be Sally. I watched, I taped it on VHS. Mm. I watched it over and over, auditioned, didn't even get cast. What? I was heartbroken. Who is this dumb director? I know, how dare you? <laughs> um, uh, and so we, I ended up doing stage management. And I was oh, like, man. oh, this is something that like is really valuable. Yeah. And I'm really glad I learned it. Was I less like, <laughs> <laughs> but this was something that I needed to learn. And there may not have been another opportunity for me to learn it. 
Mm. And so it was really helpful in that aspect. And still I was like, oh, I'll never be Sally. But I learned, I, I understand why. They were like doing the educator thing, which, okay, fine. Whatever. I hate those directors. I know. <laughs> Come on, Anna Francis. Come on. They Mr. Just, Summers. <laughs> they didn't see how you who you were going to be, obviously. Or were they testing you? Pushing I, you, I think they were just being, I think they knew I think, that I was going to be okay. So like, let's, let's give uh, some other kids a chance. I think oh. that's part of being that well-rounded performer is mm-hmm. understanding performance from every aspect and every angle and how important every single mm-hmm. part actually is to make a whole. So. And CTW was really good at that too. Like I, I was under the Dottie uh, Zimmerman reign and yep. they did a, she did a really good job of being like, great, now you're going to do lights. Now you're going to do costumes. Now you're going to stage man. Now you're going to do props. You're going to, now you're going to paint the set. Like you're going to well, figure her, it all one, out. I think one of, I think it's, it's one of the girls is like directing or helping oh, yeah. direct yeah. with the new show that they're doing. Yeah. And she just started out as a performer too. Yeah. So it's like, you yeah, know. Yeah, we did her episode. They did um, the last five years. Oh, nice. That's what they did. Weren't Very you in nice. that? I did do that for summer. Oh, that was the, that was yeah. so right. See, stalker. Oh, I love it. Again, also belting. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, but they should have known to give you the lead roles because as soon as you got out of Baldwin Wallace, you got all these jobs right away. I got right? really lucky. Oh, did you seriously? I feel like I okay. did. I mean, it's, it's very much in any audition, you have to, it's right place, right time. Do you remind your, of the director of the next door neighbor that is annoying? You're not going to get the job. Are you the right height to um, replace somebody who's a dance partner? Then, like, you're not going to mm. get the job. If So it's very much, I, I have felt like I'm in the right place at the right time and the right moment. And then I came prepared for that moment. And that's the big part. So did you were in New York City and you got the job right away, or did it take you three years to get a job? I, I <laughs> graduated right in Mother's Day 2008, and I ended up booking Dorothy in Wizard of Oz in July. Get out of town. I was very lucky. Again, like that's that's not the norm. I that is not the so norm. So you were like you just got on the phone like beep boop, beep boop. Helen, I got this. Literally, I think my mom. <laughs> I think she was at work that day, and I was oh. like, "Get out of the studio!" Yeah, get Bring out. Leave. Your phone off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have news. We have like, well, when Gabriel was going through college stuff, we had a code word. Ooh. So like, when I would text him, I would like, and then I remember once he wasn't answering, and I was like texting in all caps, and I'm like, "Pick up your You're phone!" You're like banana. What was banana. the code? Yeah, what was the code? Was it a bad word? Tap king. Oh, tap oh, king. Oh, cute. <laughs> It was ch- he's gonna hate us for <laughs> he's gonna like great no. he comes hates out. every time we talk it, about actually it. his sister is the one who invented that oh so. yeah, I yeah. love that so but you got a job right away but when was Legally Blonde before so Legally Blonde after? happened the last semester of my senior year okay so do you want the long story yeah I want all the stories so uh the beginning of senior year, we had this casting director, Rachel Hoffman, who was near and dear to my heart, uh, come in and do a master class. And mm-hmm. so at then... At Baldwin Wallace. At Baldwin Wallace. Okay. Yep. And she, like, it's to basically, hey, these are incoming seniors. See what they're doing. Help work with them. What is being done? Blah, blah, blah. I think I got put into a file because a couple weeks later, I got called in to audition for... Uh, the show Next to Normal, when it was first, like, being created down D.C., Atlanta. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. And so I got far enough that I got to audition in front of the director, in front of, like, all the creatives. Wow. And so at that moment, I was like, oh, I think I'm I'm okay. I can, like, I'm in the right, I'm company. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't get it. But I, again, got put into a file and so when this Legally Blonde thing came around, I didn't have to go and audition. I just got sent to callbacks because this is how I think it happened. Anna Lee Ashford was the original Natalie in the Next to Normal workshops. Ash- Anna Lee Ashford's track in Legally Blonde covers Elle Woods. So I think they were like, okay, who in that realm, who in those files can we bring in for this? And I was a name in that. So it's networking. It's it's no, not what you know to you know sometimes. Yeah, seriously. networking. You yeah. already did some stuff. She already saw you. And exactly. Said, she knows she can trust me going into a room. I won't make a fool out of myself and go. make her look bad. And so with that, <laughs> yeah, this is a casting agent. Yes. Yes, casting yeah. director, casting and agent. And so whatever. um she so I brought I went to Chicago to audition for Legally Blonde, and ended up getting it. Flew to New York. Did all the reality show, humble jumble, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, thing. everybody needs to go look this up. The search oh for the next It's a cult Woods. classic, apparently. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. So if you haven't, you didn't know and you didn't know this thing existed, get your it, head out of your butt and go watch this because it's, it's great. It's very funny. I'm, uh, I teach private voice now, and every now and then 
I'll have some. It actually happened today. Get I have a singer out in LA, and she's a couple years younger than me. And she was like, "So I just realized." <laughs> Whenever that comes out, I'm like, "Come on, bring it on." Um, I teach adjunct uh, voice at Marymount Manhattan College. Yeah, currently. great school. Another really, really, great, really school great school you're associated school. with. And they're doing Legally Blonde in the spring, and I'm mm. just waiting for everybody in this in my voice oh my studio gosh. to like figure it out. It's it's a cult classic. I would Can I have their email addresses? I'll just send this podcast oh. <laughs> straight to them. <laughs> Be like, just wait, guys. Just an 18-year-old sc- or a 22-year-old screaming at you. Yo. Throwing papers and screaming. Is that when you were 22? <laughs> yeah. 22. Yeah, I thought you were amazing. I'm serious. When, I, really when I hit the, the play on the YouTube, I don't know what I was expecting. Actually, it wasn't YouTube. It was on what? An MTV's website, I think. Probably. I you you yeah. said the play on the YouTube. I hit the play. <laughs> on the, on the, the interwebs. Hit the play button on the there. I, was, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. So when I hit play, I was like, uh, Helen, this is your daughter. <laughs> What the heck? I'm a sleeper I hit. Yeah, I didn't expect <laughs> that all to come out of her. It was just great. So then you, so then you did that, and and that you were on that show for a while though. You, oh, I was the first one like, kicked off. You were not. Oh yes. Oh, I thought you got all the way to like fourth. No, oh. I was. The fir- I got a cool. I got a montage. I'm. I was always on the beginning part, but I was the first one kicked off. <laughs> and I was like, cool. So <laughs> they were like, bye. And oh. like, and what's funny and. Did she like, say she's not even blonde? <laughs> I, I was like, come on. <laughs> um, is I auditioned for Legally Blonde for years, going in for Elle, going in for one of the sorority girls, going in for Kate, literally Bending it. Bending snap person, yeah. Everyone, like regional theaters, national tours, non-equity national yeah. tours. You're going out for Kyle. Who cares, right? yet to get <laughs> cast in it at all. Whoa. And I'm like, come on! It's the bane of my existence. I was like, let me just, I want to be the Gilly, uh, Jillian's track where she just rides the car and, he, and she's like, how about a nice Birkin bag? That's all I want to do. And then I'll be like, phew. So like, you can't be, you're, you're not like, in I Elwood. already know the entire show. Yeah. I was like, come on! And you can't be Sally either, apparently. It's I know. Like, come on. There was one at, I think, one of the last or second to last, I had a jump rope. And it's usually the same choreographer or associate choreographer. And I remember him coming up to me and saying, you're getting better. <laughs> oh, my like, gosh. Ah. I hope so he didn't not pat get this you job. like a dog. <laughs> you're getting like, better. Cool. Cool. I hope he didn't pat you like a dog like that because <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Maybe next time. <laughs> uh, I was like, well, A for effort. Exactly. Uh, but, but so, okay, so you did that, and you've done some pretty amazing things, though. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you were on um, – Original soundtracks. Uh, original Broadway company, yeah. Yeah. So again, we're gonna reach back into our family. Yes. My daughter was in Bonnie and Clyde, <gasps> and she played young Bonnie. Oh, no, well, she wasn't young Bonnie. Youngest. She was like teen the Bonnie. The middle, the middle Bonnie. Okay, yeah. The middle, the middle Bonnie. Yeah. And guess who I brought up to her when she <laughs> <laughs> when the, when it came out. And the audition was there. I said, hey, um, just so you know, Cassie Okanka oh. was in you know the show. So. Yeah, no <laughs> pressure, Kyle. <laughs> no, I like to just throw stuff out so it makes it a bigger deal. Because she's like, what's Bonnie and Clyde? It's Bonnie just and Clyde. Just Just so you know, Cassie exactly. Okanka was in Bonnie and Clyde. Oh. And she was like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not bad then. <laughs> um, I have a cool, fun Bonnie and Clyde story. Sure. Uh, of a, It's a long-term game. Like, tell your son is it long-term game. So uh, senior year, before the Legally Blonde thing happened, I got to do the uh, regional premiere of Brooklyn. And so we were double cast. It's me and my dear friend, Patty Lore, and playing Brooklyn. And they, um, like BW does, they brought in the original casting director, Dave Clemens. And Dave was like, this is really good. This production's really great. Can I bring in the um, original director? Will you, like, play to fly him out and have him see the show? And they were like, yes, of course. And it just happened that my cast was on when Jeff Calhoun came. And so I, like, of course, was like, Jeff Calhoun, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, cut to uh, f- uh, three, three, four years later, um, I walk into the Bonnie and Clyde room, and Jeff Calhoun is sitting behind the oh. table. And so I do my audition, and he looks at my resume and goes, Brooklyn. And I was like, yeah, you actually saw me in Cleveland. And he goes, Huh. And then, like, moves on. But I was like, okay. <laughs> but that's okay. Maybe hey, it was you like. you got a huh. Exactly. Yeah. Got, exactly. It was I like, mean, oh, do I remember that? Was she good? Because I had no Broadway credits. I, wasn't, I was still non-equity. I wasn't part mm-hmm, of the union. Mm-hmm. And I was auditioning for this Broadway show. And I ended up not um, getting it past them because my feedback was I looked too frumpy. Oh, my so God. Oh, wow. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Dude, vicious. And so they, they did a rerun of... 
um, people and I the casting director at the time Justin Huff was like we're gonna bring you in again this was your feedback so then I curled Look. my hair I put on red lipstick I changed my dress and I was like I need to be like far from as frumpy as I can be I didn't change how I did the material at all and I ended up getting cast wow and right? cast as uh, in as, the on- um, as a swing as a swing so I understudied I the saw. three ensemble girls and Bonnie right and you did perform Bonnie and I that was my Broadway debut I walked awesome. on stage as it was the most incredible thing and, and I bet I mean, uh, so when you get these little roles, you just, you know, call everybody up that you know and just e- explode all over them? Yes. Good. It, yeah, it's one of those that's like, hey, this is happening. I have no information other than that. <laughs> 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 like, this is happening. I remember um, I had a lot of friends show up because as a swing, you don't necessarily know when you're going on. And so mm-hmm. um, Laura Osnes, who I was understanding, called out on Sunday morning. And so I had maybe about three hours to basically round the troops and tell everybody, hey, I'm going on. And I had like maybe 10, 15 people that were able to get tickets and show up, which was really cool. 10 or 15 people actually paid money to come and see you. To see you. To see you specifically. (laughs) I was just going to point out if. Gabe ever makes it that far, oh, yeah. my butt will be you in mean the car. When? That doesn't count. So <laughs> fast, I'd be like, "Can we get a ticket, a plane ticket, within three hours?" And I'm like, let's go. Yeah, start that's, driving to Detroit. So, let's yeah, go. So I can see why you know she. I mean, that's a big deal. It was very cool. Did mom come and see you out there? They mom weren't dad, able parents? to okay. because oh, no. also the show ran. It was in previews for a month and then ran for a month and closed. Oh. <laughs> It was very short. And I got to do one of the other ensemble tracks. And then my journey with Bonnie and Clyde was done. But then if we go on Spotify and we see ensemble, that's you. That's me. That's you. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, like you said, though, a lot of this is a, it's all about meeting people and mm-hmm. networking. And it's like that's like such a big deal, too. That's and if really you're somebody cool. that's like a memorable person... You know, and just like yeah, you want to like work with people. Yeah, were you nervous? Were you crapping your pants up I, there on stage? I am what I well, was what my friends grass? called. Was yeah, that too grass? Literally, <laughs> I hope not. If, the, Jeez, the wardrobe bro. would be so mad. Um, I'm what uh, my, <laughs> 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 uh, my friends call. We call ourselves fear based artists. Okay. So we're so scared of messing up that you're going to like overdo. So I remember sitting in the back during rehearsals with lovely Justin Sargent, he was covering Clyde, and I would just mouth the words, mouth the lines, see what they're doing, and do it in the back of the house every every <laughs> single chance I got. Just because you didn't really, we had, when I went on, I had a, like a halvesy music rehearsal and a rehearsal of like four scenes in act one. Other than that, I'd never, like, I've never sung with the orchestra before. I'd never put on costumes. I'd Why? Never, like, Why hadn't you never done that before? We were still in previews. Oh, so I we were. So actually means. things were, so dur- when a show is running on Broadway and it's brand new, they'll do this thing called previews, which for three weeks to five weeks, depending on the production, you'll be doing the show at night and rehearsing during the day. And so the composer, the book writers, the lyricists, everybody will be, at the theater and thinking, okay, that joke didn't land. We need to change that. Okay, this scene is clunky. We need to figure oh. that out. Ooh, I want to. And actually, they are still working still on the show up it. to that point. Yeah, so there, it's it's a it was a thing, and so I know they're going in. I was there was a moment where harmonies were getting switched. So these and, are real audiences okay, in the and crowd. So and they're I, changing big it. Thing, okay. audiences. And I'd like to point out too, with somebody who was like at the time who was a swing and you hadn't actually been the person yet mm-hmm. and if they would have said you're going on I would be like oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> is, and, and for all those obviously I think everybody listening to this knows what a swing is but how many swing roles did you have to cover? Four. Four. <laughs> Oh, sweet baby Jesus. But, like, I'm very lucky. I swung a show where the most harmony I had was in thirds. I mean, and it was, like, for two notes. Uh, the dancing was consistent of a box step and some turns. Okay, yeah. So I was not covering, like, a wicked situation. Right, because Bonnie or, and Clyde didn't have crazy dance. Exactly. Right, I didn't right. have, even have a dance call audition. Okay. So I, I was like, this I can handle. Okay. But but you basically covered, it sounds like, every female role in Every except Bonnie. the moms and Blanche, yeah. Oh, Oh, you didn't cover Blanche? I didn't. Okay, that's okay that's Yep, surprising. lovely Katie Tansky did. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, so any of the roles that you were age appropriate for. Yes, basically. exactly. Gotcha. Okay, all right, man. So, but that's a lot to have to know, though. It, and, and I will say BW helped me a lot because we did double casting in BW. Okay. And the way Vicky did was just she would block a scene 
with one cast, and then she would basically tag in and continue the scene. You didn't go back. What do you so mean you tag have, in? Like, so like, like, like WWF out, w- wrestling? Like, like exactly. wrestling? And you you're tag in. out and you're in? Yeah. Wow, and so okay. um, it was our responsibility to say, okay, they are holding the suitcase like with that. their right hand. Are they doing that because they need to open the door with their left, or are they doing that because they're right-handed? Oh. Okay, <laughs> I see that they're, they have to exit through this wing, and so uh, she trained your eye really well to – like to be an understudy really, really easily. So I already knew the process of what I needed to do to make sure that if that were to happen, I were to just go on on, I think it was preview 13. So it's been running for 13 shows. Shows, 13 shows. Um, so 13 I, days probably, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. And I would be ready to do it. And yeah. the I did forget a picture. And so it was... St- oh, uh, fired. I know. <laughs> well, I was... Jeremy Jordan was playing Clyde and I... Who oh, never heard of him? <laughs> Uh, I've never heard of like, Jeremy what? Jordan before. And Jeremy, like, Jeremy who? You're like, oh, that, oh, that, oh little, that little man. Oh, just the hot guy from Newsies. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. And so uh, it was during a jail scene, and his mic is off. He's like, you got a picture for me? And I said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I just stood there because I was like, this is, I forgot. That's when I you, forgot is that when you go and visit him when he's in prison? Yes. Oh, my god. And gosh. he was like, you got a picture? And I was like, mm, mm, no. In, nope. in you your wish. head, you're probably thinking, mm, I was expletive, like, that's what I forgot. I did not. So. You but wish. I, you wish I did. But I was like, for a Broadway debut and without a pudding or anything, I was like, I will take not having a picture. Without a pudding? What? Oh, a put in. A put in. Oh. So when you um, understudy or if you're replacing in a show... Tip it like it's what the pudding. what the hope no. is. Now you should bring pudding to your place. It's definitely <laughs> not pudding. <laughs> we prefer like tapioca. Okay. Um, you will have everybody in the cast basically be other parts, and you, it's your personal dress rehearsal. They might do a put in for um, all the understudies, and then every it's it's your personal gotcha. dress rehearsal. So everybody else has already done it a million times. Exactly. So this one's just for you because yeah. you need the extra work. Because you haven't done it because you suck. Exactly. Because okay. so <laughs> you're terrible. Yeah. It's a practice. Um, costume changes, um, dancing in costumes, which is totally different than what you would normally rehearse in. And so I didn't get a put in for Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, jeez. Um, so it was very much like, how do I work this costume piece? Is my hat on? I can't feel it. I'm my wig. Like, let's hope I'm dressed. I'm going out. Yes. I want to talk about Wicked because you're in Wicked, too. Wicked! See, we're going to... This whole so podcast okay, is about wait, you. Wait, wait, we're going to brag about her. Let oh. me ask this really quick yeah. before uh-huh. we go into the mm-hmm. other... Of all this, because it sounds to me like you have gotten the opportunity to do so many different Crazy. parts. Crazy. Really lucky. Which one would you say is your favorite? I am curious. She hasn't even gone through them all yet. I am always. It doesn't matter. It depends. (laughs) It depends. You have to go through things in this big chronological list. (laughs) We gotta switch things up here a little bit. I just wanted to know. It depends on what I'm looking for. Mm. I really enjoyed, like. Um, I did Dorothy and Wizard of Oz, and that taught me how to yeah. be a leader in a company. It yeah. taught me how to do eight shows a week. It That's taught me how huge. to do press. It taught me how to, um, like, handle being the leader of a company. I feel like that's, like, every little girl's dream to be Dorothy. Oh, my gosh. It was yeah. cool. You know? It was really cool. Yeah. It was really, very Or Tinkerbell. Cool. Like, to mm. wear the ruby slippers. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. and, I mean, come on. Right? And you, But you never get a chance off stage. See, when I saw <laughs> you, when I saw you come to W2L, was that was when you were on a break from being on the national that tour of uh, of Wizard of Oz, and you told me this insane story about how you had to go to the um, Smithsonian. Oh, yeah! yeah. That's I got to open the Smithsonian. Yes, he showed me that video. Of oh. you so, I'm such a... Opening <laughs> Smithsonian. He was like, hi, She's I'm She's exposing what a fangirl I am over oh, here. I love that. <laughs> I just, we, uh, my husband and I went down to D.C., and I remember walking past this building, I was like... I opened that. Like, oh, that's amazing. Toss, toss, like, I'm Hair party. toss, hello. But so you had told me that that was the most like nerve-wracking thing you would had to do. It was because vi- because you were in the lobby. I was like thinking of standing on a crate. I was like, show business. Oh. Um, but it was I. It was more than like, please come see our show. I was like, feel felt like I was doing a national service. Oh. I think I traveled underneath. And I met Colin Powell that same oh day, and God. I was like, I'm a. I have to like. <laughs> Do my country right by no, this. No, seriously, we all know the American public. If you had screwed that up, they would have been like, that was Dorothy. Exactly. How could she? <laughs> I mean, honestly. She's not from Kansas. I exactly. Did. Lies. But, but what were you doing there in that particular day at Smithsonian? Oh, I was, uh, because it was the American history 
one, I think, yeah. is where uh, Dorothy's uh, red shoes are. And so it's one of the big, bigger things from Judy Garland's shoes as part of the uh, they were collection. They were actually putting it into the museum. That's mm-hmm. what I wanted to hear you say. Yeah. So they were putting the ruby slippers into the mu- Smithsonian the Museum. museum mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And you were playing and Dorothy I was the person at, at the, the time. time. Again, right place, right time. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> sing, sing somewhere over the rainbow right now yeah, in front you're of all like, these it's people. It's not like Judy Garland wasn't a really an amazing singer, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool. No, no, yeah, no that big was, shoes. That was a huge deal. So, of course, I came home and told my whole family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, this lady, I work with her daughter, did this thing, and she's amazing. That's and, really sweet. And she's going to be really cool someday. And, <laughs> oh, and then he was like, and, and CTW. And see, like, he was just, he just... He's he's a very very I'm supportive ridiculous. dad. Yeah. So he's like he just likes to see. It's the same thing. Why I think that he and Ron and Tom do this podcast. It's like he just likes to see that there are people out there that are living their dreams, and it's possible for everybody to be able to do that. Absolutely. It doesn't matter where you're from. It's yeah. true. It's They're so not all true. living in Manhattan that do Broadway. No. They come from little old Toledo and Absolutely. go to some school that doesn't exist anymore. Yes, <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> So you, you did that. Go ahead. Sorry, you were going to say I had to get back to your question about my favorite roles. Oh, yeah. Um, there's that. I that interrupted. One. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I got to under... So I understudied Glinda on the Wicked National Tour. And oh, I, that's it? That, just that's that. That's all you did? Okay. Um, and I, uh, I realized that is one of my favorite journeys. Because while Elphaba gets the better songs, I will fully mm-hmm. admit... Uh, Glinda has the better journey. Like, you get to actually go through a whole human experience in that show. And that's re- that was really, really cool. I also hate heights. So being in the bubble was a, like, personal <laughs> conquest I did whenever I got to go on. Yeah, she does start off kind of shallow, and then she becomes yeah. this whole different person. Yeah, and it's, it's nice. really cool. And then thirdly, I, 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 sometimes I feel like it's my greatest hits, but I got to be a part of the School of Rock original Broadway yeah. company. Nice. And... I have never, like, I always knew art was important for children because, like, obviously I felt it myself. But to have kids join our company that said, I saw this show and I wanted to learn to play the bass. Mm. So I tr- I played the bass and I learned and now I'm in this show. I would have cried. I'm just going to throw that it's out just there. Like, it's just amazing. I it's cried just everything. I cried amazing. trailers. You kidding me? I'm, just, I'm, I'm pathetic. Yeah, and it's just, and now. Movie no, trailers, right? Yeah, oh, movie trailers. Okay. What? I was what do you think say. I was talking about? It's like, oh, semi. Like, thank so you. Semi trailers. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> And like oh, just to see, wide trailers, I'm busting that's your saying. chops, man. It's great. <laughs> and just to see how School of Rock has opened up, and now these kids are enjoying rock and roll and being able to be kids and have this cool experience, and to know like I was a part of the beginning of that is really freaking cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very very cool. So when I when I contacted you. Mm-hmm. And you responded. I was very excited. Oh, I was you know fangirl. So I was like, <laughs> "Yay!" She, she actually answered me. Um, but then you were like, "I'm gonna be in St. Louis." <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna be in Manhattan. Oh, and then yes. I'm gonna be in St. Louis again. I'm like, "What is going on there? Were you flying back and forth like all yes. the time?" Uh, so doing? my husband, uh, we met out doing Wicked. He was a Bach understudy. I was a Glenda understudy. Oh, nice. What a showman's turned into yeah, a 10-year relationship. But you also played Nessa showman's, understudy, that's too. Great. Yes, so I did Nessa understudy and Nessa. Bach. So Bach actually did get Nessa. He got her in there the you end. Go. <laughs> dee, dee, dee. Um, uh, he has decided to take his feet out of the business and get an MBA. And so he's going to be the stable one, yeah. and um, he and so he got he got accepted to Wash U, Washington University in St. Louis, mm. and so we were like, let's see what living in the Midwest is as like a fully fledged adult. Mm. What does this do? What is the community here? And so, but I didn't want to give up my job teaching at Marymount. Yeah, and I so can understand. That's a, I great, was just that's a great opportunity. Commuting, I was bi coastal, the Mississippi coast and the East Coast. And so it was one of those things I flew out on Mondays and came back on Thursdays. Was? You did? Or are you still? Uh, yes. The semester, he's going to graduate either Summer, December yeah. or one more full yeah. year. And so during that time, we'll figure out yeah. when. But when in the meantime, where? you're going to be in Marymount, Manhattan, teaching people yeah. how to sing really well. Which is crazy like, because if that was one of the places that. Oh, oh we're back I was like, no, no, no. Again. He would have, sure, he would have, like, that would have been so cool, though. That, like, that would have been crazy. That would have been. Like, and we know, quite, we, knew quite, we know quite a few of the dancers that graduated with him nice. go, to, go to Marymount. So. They have a great dance program. I would yeah, say I really quite do. a few. I'd know, say, a couple. A couple people hey. that are good enough to go to Marymount, Manhattan. Hey. That's what I would say, because that's a really elite program there. Yeah, on the both dance sides. program's really great. Yeah, so 
Oh, well, so this is Cassie, everybody. That's true. You it's know, me. She's pretty awesome. She's done a oh. lot of stuff. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to cut all this. I was going to say, we're going to cut, cut, cut. All right. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, yeah, so she's she's done some great stuff, obviously, and um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you just we've talked about every little single thing out there. Started at CTW, no, started at this. Perry okay, Park Grandma Diner. Rose's <laughs> Diner Entertainment Theater, DC okay, Ranch. So for all those people out there that have no idea what we're talking about when we say CTW, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be the uh, Children's, Children's Theater, Theater Workshop. Workshop. There yeah. you go at the. Well, it's Collingwood Art Center, there you go. but I know that they bought the place at Ohio Theater. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where I did Oliver and Annie. Yeah, and like Holly had said, that was where I think it was you or, or your mother that told us to get involved in theater CTW to go there. Point. Yeah, that's like, where that he started. Was like, that was his yeah. very very. He was yeah. the little village boy who Aww. put who put the who corn put the inside corn the, in the soup, the soup bowl. <laughs> of stone Cast. soup. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I was like, here you go, boom! All four years old of them. Oh. That's when it started, and that's when everything... And a dream was born. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> well, and the but, funny thing is, is that I'm pretty sure you got name dropped, like, when he went to a couple of the classes oh, and stuff, and they were uh, like, and a CTW alumni. <laughs> yeah, that's what... Hey, hey, we can't all start off being at this diner working ah. full time, you know I mean? It's a great thing, you know? Some people have to start at, you know, littler things, putting corn in bowls. So. Hey, nothing and, wrong with and, that. Yeah, and so that's it. I think we're all good, and I just want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. 